Okay, I don't have a sign up for today. How are you doing? Um, last time we talked, I mentioned an email that I sent to uh, a friend from Thailand. Uh, well, I was in Thailand to a friend in the United States. And uh, I mentioned that I uh, joked in that email um, uh, about some things. So, um, because that happened on day eight post-op, uh, one day before my uh, day nine post-op, uh, I almost said right before my surgery, uh, before day nine post-op, I believe, uh, I have reason to believe that the Dr. Support Clinic has um, that email and that they might be willing to use it to um, uh, defend their case uh, for sabotaging my sex change. Uh, this is about uh, my sex change sabotage. Um, I am accusing the Dr. Dr. Suporn Clinic of sabotaging my sex change on day nine post-op um, with uh, embalming fluid, uh, possibly formaldehyde, um, possibly cedar oil or some other oil-based embalming fluid that um, has a long-lasting toxicity. So. Um, because uh, this email um, has some things in there that are kind of tongue-in-cheek, not really meant um, to reflect 100% of what uh, I believe in, um, I feel the need to uh, discuss some of the things that might be taken out of context. and. Um, save the viewer a lot of uh, trouble in the future trying to understand what's going on, um, what's really going on with Dr. Sue Porn and his clinic, and why are they, um, why are they hurting people? I don't know if there's anyone else uh, that has been hurt in the same fashion that I have, but um, why they might be th doing this to uh, patients. So um, I'm just going to read uh, <coughs> let's see I started I started wanting to be a girl at a very young age uh, as young as I can remember um, waking up in the middle of the night wanting to be a girl and dreaming that you know, uh, can I wake up as a girl, um, looking, looking down at my groin and w wanting whatever is there to be gone. Um, it wasn't something that I told anybody about. Uh, I suppose I could have told my mom at a very young age and not remember that I told her. Um, she hasn't said I... I told her anything, so, um, but she's also, uh, non-accepting, uh, religious conservative, and may not have, um, wanted to, uh, conf confess that, or conclude that, but, um, my parents were, uh, my dad was a fighter pilot in the Air Force, he wasn't around a lot, when he was around, he was, uh, very disciplined, disciplinary, um, if you were holding your fork right wrong at the, uh, if you weren't ho holding your fork right at the table, he would, he would, uh, take a, his fork and hit you with it or, or hit you with his, uh, his, uh, his hand, never with a fist, but with, um, something painful like a ring on his finger, you know, um, and there was five of us kids, so it was kind of, uh, embarrassing in a big group like that to get disciplined in front of everybody um, but at the same time everyone else got disciplined too um,
I don't want to get too far into my uh, my childhood because uh, there's there's not that much time to cover the the basics that may, maybe later I can get into it. But uh, um, you know, there's the argument that uh, transgender people are subject to their environment versus uh, you know being nurtured. I mean, being uh, a product of nature. And um, I'm not trying to solve that argument right here. I'm just simply saying that um, I, for whatever reason, did, may not have had an, an environment to uh, be honest with my true feelings to my parents. I, I don't believe I ever told them that I wanted to be a girl. I, I hid it, and that, that could have been responsible for my late transition in life. Uh, I started, I'm 47 now. I started taking hormones when I was 30, uh, 34, 34 years old. Um, I think they were still doing, able to do their work. Uh, hormones don't, um, uh, aren't as effective as the later person transitions. But um, I, uh, I was living on my own for the first time. I moved out of the house when I was 31 and um, got a job as a software engineer and was able to, uh, in my own privacy, in my own apartment, um, begin to live inside of my apartment as a woman and then uh, deciding to take hormones um, on my own through the internet, uh, take hormones to see if that's what I wanted to do. And uh, within a year, I saw a uh, gender counselor uh, who uh, whose name I won't mention right now um, who uh, wrote a very brief letter to Dr. Sue Korn indicating a summary of, of uh, my visits to her um, she uh, she saw me for about six months and then I got a job out of state and had to move and, and uh, the nature of my work uh, prevented me from from uh, seeing a regular therapist um, moving around every six months to a year and the fact that I was able to get my hormones and get my legal documentation switched over I I didn't really and the, and the fact that Dr. Support exists uh, who didn't require a letter didn't require uh, a letter from a doctor saying I was okay for surgery. I, I f still feel that I was okay for surgery. I, I, uh, I mean, this is this is kind of jumping around. This is not getting to uh, my childhood and and what I wanted to talk about. But it's just um, all this stuff has been talked, been gone over um, in other videos. So I, I'm not gonna. Um, spending any time or wasting time to trying to go over that uh, material um, but I at the time of my uh, surgery I had four and a half years of real life living as a woman and I had uh, my legal documentation switched over and I was successful as a software engineer uh, in aerospace um, so anyways, getting back to my childhood, I, I always remember feeling empty at nighttime, uh, going to bed and looking down at myself and my groin and seeing something that I didn't want to be there, something that, that felt very out of place and very uncomfortable and, um, that continued on till about 11 years old um, when my parents divorced uh, I think there was another period of of questioning but there was a lot of stuff going on that um, you know moving and and trying to fit into a new school that uh, was also uh, a lot of stress on me um, so there wasn't a whole lot of going on between like age 11 when my parents divorced 
and puberty, which is around 15 or 16. And uh, for some reason, I uh, I uh, could not masturbate as a teenager without putting uh, women's clothing on. And uh, I uh, I don't know what the reason for that is. I some people would say that if you are um, a true transsexual, that you're not aroused with uh, women's clothing on, that you wear it. Well, it's not that you aren't aroused, but the, the purpose of wearing the clothing is is um, because you really feel you're a woman inside, and and that uh, you're not just doing it to get your rocks off. So, um, I. I don't know what to say to that. I, I certainly feel that that's a, a valid uh, argument, but I don't think it's enough to say that because someone does uh, cross-dress and masturbate uh, on a regular basis that they, for some reason, are not uh, a, fe a female inside or should not transition or. Uh, you know, are not qualified, you know, there's, there seems to be a big war about, uh, currently, there's a big war in, on the internet, um, one side being the, the girl from TS Roadmap, I forget her name, um, and, uh, Calpernica Adams, um, she's a friend of, of, you know, on that, on that side of the argument, and, and many others that say that that's, you know, that's, um, you know that that's the dividing line you know if you if you are um, I mean correct me if I'm wrong uh, I I'm just going from my from memory of research that I've done years ago that I haven't uh, really revisited so um, I apologize if I got that wrong Calperna, Calpurnia but um, there's, de there's definitely an argument out there against uh, those that are um, you know, they 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 <clears throat> they they look down upon um, any kind of eroticism that's associated with uh, wearing female clothing. So um, I I just want to say that I don't think the I don't think there is a con conclusion as to that being a deciding factor. Uh, I mean, there's many reasons why uh, why someone could be erotic uh, with women's clothing on and still be female inside. Uh, there's many reasons why someone would want to transition, um, and I think the bottom line is we don't we don't want to. We don't want to punish somebody for for transitioning for reasons we don't believe in. We don't want to. I mean, that's what I'm going through. Uh, we don't want to. Um, you know, unless we have solid evidence, we don't want to get into the business of um, deciding who can transition and who can't. Uh, the 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 whole. Standards of care. The, the HBSOC is is to prevent people from transitioning that might be unhappy afterwards. Um, and and I think the chief test for that uh, that prevents people from getting uh, to that point is the real life test. You know, if someone's willing to live full time in their chosen gender um, at work, you know, and and step out of the house and and do this full time. And they and they are successful at it. They can find employment, and and their life seems to, to have uh, a benefit. Then, um, why not? Uh, why not let that person seek um, what makes them happy? You know, are who are they hurting? You know, are we cling? Are we going to cling on to this idea that you have to? Uh, there's, there's something called a true transsexual. That um, you know you have to be begging your parents uh, day in and day out from day one 
know, please, I want to be a girl. I mean, uh, that, that doesn't happen. So, uh, in, a, in a very few, very few rare cases, it does happen. Um, I want to say Kristen Jorgensen, but I, I don't know if that's the case for her. But uh, she was the first uh, transgender person uh, that got a sex change. Not the first transgender person. But, uh, so I... I masturbated while I cross-dressed, and I um, masturbated for long periods of time. Um, you know, I I remember wearing the clothes after masturbation, and for two or three more hours after it. So I I spent a lot of time, you know, every for days, you know, during the week. Um, Sometimes I would purge and not do it for a few weeks, but I always came back to it. You know, I, you know, I always uh, would. Sometimes I hid my clothing and I would go try to find the clothing. And sometimes I hid it in a dumpster and it wouldn't be there when I got back. But um, is masturbating is is doesn't mean that I'm. I'm uh, a man that's uh, that's excited for a woman so much that he wants to um, put on the clothing of a woman to feel the the woman uh, to to go through uh, d just to be satisfied just just to be satisfied for us you know a few hours uh, put put on the clothing and then want to go get a, a, a sex change um, and live my life 100% uh, because I'm still a man inside I don't believe that's the case I I don't uh, anyways that's uh, we've already talked to I've already brought that subject up and I don't have enough knowledge to um, I think it would be a great discussion to get into uh, maybe uh, the next video is can um, can a person masturbate and still be a woman inside and uh, why do we think that uh, masturbation is a man who is um, is you know uh, getting off on the th on on the thought of uh, a woman or thought of being a woman? Okay, so um, it's getting late uh, in my video, uh, and um, I forgot what else I was going to go through, but. These are kinds of things that I was going to, um, uh, these are the kinds of things that are in my email um, on day eight post-op. And I was talking to a friend in San Diego. Um, this friend was a out and proud transsexual um, who uh, I was friends with. Uh, and then we parted ways and we parted ways because uh, she didn't understand my desire to be stealth, uh, to be, uh, and the efforts to go into that. Um, and I was very put off from that. Um, and I think she was put off from it. Uh, she, um, Anyway, she she upset me, and and I wrote in the the email that you know I had these feelings that I was uh, uh, you know post op. She was contacting me at, from the United States. I hadn't talked to her in years, and she contacted me and and asked me how I was doing and. Um, I was kind of put off 
by that. I, I was joyous being posted up. I was put up by um, by her showing interest in my transition at a point where my transition was over. I had already gone through all the struggles of transition. Uh, I didn't need her help anymore. And here she was asking me how my surgery was going. Uh, I was pretty upset inside that this person was showing interest in me um, after I'd gone through the whole ordeal. So um, my email is uh, is is really just trying to irritate her. Trying to, I think I was trying to irritate her because I I said things in that email that. Uh, would have irritated uh, a transgender person, um, namely that a crossdresser would get themselves into a sex change and do it with a prominent uh, sex change surgeon. Um, that's uh, that's possibly another video. Uh, I, it's definitely a video where I have the email uh, that I have not shown you yet that I will show you eventually. Uh, that um, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, that that was an email that I I felt was taken out of context. If it was if it was read by someone else, uh, especially if it was read by Dr. Suporn, and uh, I don't know how it got into his hands. Uh, it definitely is possible. I was using uh, wireless internet in his uh, recovery uh, hotel, his outpatient hotel. Um, I uh, remember agreeing to uh, the internet not being secure. One of those um, long, one of those long uh, end user agreements that you click OK on, you don't really read. Um, so there's a lot of things here that we have to talk about that are embarrassing and no one wants to talk about it because uh, they, um, I, I think there's a lot of people that are in the same situation as me. They, they don't understand why they want to change their gender and uh, they know they're happy where they are but their stories don't fit in, in this mold that, that uh, the world has created for us, including the transgender community that that uh, seems to hold on a, to a particular story um, for transition. And you know, this is the type of person that transitions. This is the reason they they do it, and that's it. So, um, and I would I would I would put forth that many transgender people are are saying a particular story to get to get surgery. Um, so, um, so that's something to talk about in another video. And, and yes, I, uh, I masturbated, uh, I cross-dressed in order to masturbate. I, I felt the tension rising, uh, and I, I possibly could not see myself being a man uh, in in a sexual uh, encounter. I can tell you, I had less than uh, a handful of of experiences as a male in a sexual relationship. Uh, I was not happy being in that part of the relation, that side of it. I wanted to be on the other side. Um, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I I. <laughs> I know that I wanted to put those clothes on and I, I didn't want to take them off until I was through with my male um, endeavor and I think uh, I personally feel that I, I needed I needed to be uh, a woman during uh, to, to keep my mind off of what I was really doing uh, to myself so um, as a young male in puberty those are you know, you really don't have any control over what's going down, going on downstairs. So, uh, 
maybe that was it. I, I needed an outlet uh, to uh, allay that um, uh, excitement and I, I, I did it. So um, that was my teenage years and, and I did it through college. I went to college when I was 23 and graduated when I was 29 and I was still doing it. And uh, when I got a job and I got a chance to live in my apartment and uh, travel to a bar in a big city, because I'm from a small, a small city, I, there, there wasn't any chance to, to go uh, driving around to a bar uh, out of town. So um, yeah, I was Washington DC, it was uh, Ziegler's Secrets. And I uh, drove there on the weekends and got got to experience what it was like to to live or, or you know go out in public uh, as a woman amongst other transgenders. So uh, why why not um, let me change gender if that's the way I'm feeling when I'm living full time and have a conscious choice in a safe environment to do so. I feel that that was a safe environment for me to to experiment and try my and find my true self, uh, especially after having so many so many years of cross dressing. Uh, why can't I determine what my destiny is? What? Why do I have to be precluded from transitioning if <clears throat> if we have some rule that you can't be erotic? Okay, so that was uh, uh, video number two since my reemergence. I wanted to do this on Thursday, and uh, it's Monday morning, and and I'm fixing to go to work. I have to be at work at eight, so I uh, I will let you guys go. And for those that um, are supporting me, I thank you. Uh, I think there was something, uh, some supporters started with an H, um, H Cobb or something like that. I, I didn't have to go check, uh, again, I don't have the computer in front of me, but, um, okay, that, that's, that's all I'm going to say today, and I will see you, uh, next time, which will be next week, and, um, I'm trying to stick to weekly schedule because it, it seems more convenient for me, but maybe I can do something uh, on a more regular basis. But um, these videos, there, there needs to be a, a more in-depth video or series of videos for talking about some of the stuff that's fairly, um, fairly complex uh, or fairly detailed. Not complex, but fairly detailed, and requires a lot of um, a lot of discussion and time to go into. So um, I hope that helps everyone understand who I am and why I think I I'm where I am at today, and that ultimately there's no real reason why anyone should be subjected to what I consider uh, punishment for for being who I am, punishment for seeking seeking to go to a doctor who uh, who I felt I met his requirements for surgery. Um, if anything, I think this is a, a a marker, if you will, for for the reasons why you shouldn't be monitoring someone's emails <laughs> without their consent, uh, using it, using it out of context, um, but uh, that's another discussion. Uh, I hope that I've answered any questions as far as who I am and and why I transitioned. Um, I feel I'm a woman inside. I. I'm still living as a woman. I'm, I'm dressing up more male because I, I have to move around, uh, kind of like uh, with my legs, um, 
kind of wobbly because I, uh, this problem in my groin and wearing pants seems to be uh, the best protection for my groin as well as wearing uh, a vest or something that that I can uh, bind above my uh, groin and not let it droop down and press against it. So, um, and my hair is short because it's easier to maintain. I don't have the time to to maintain long hair because it is thin. So uh, it gets in a lot of knots. Um, okay, so uh, that was uh, a scary video. And uh, if tell me if there's anything that I need to be doing differently uh, to be more engaging, maybe or 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 uh, make it more entertaining for you. Um, I think this is a subject that no one's talking about, and unfortunately, uh, I, I'm the person that has to talk about it because, uh, again, I feel I feel that Dr. Suporn's clinic has uh, an email that was sent the day before my complications, and uh, they're going to use this email at some point to justify what they are trying to uh, say is uh, a sabotage of a sex change. Um, in reality, it's a sabotage of my transition and it's retaliation uh, for comments I made on his on his website. It has nothing to do with transgenderism or whether or not somebody um, masturbates or or what have you. It, it has to do with retaliation. And uh, by going into this part of my life, I can clear that out before he um, or his clinic tries to use it. So um, thank you for your time, and I will talk to you next time.